series of teaching on journey of covenant. And today we want to handle the third part of that message. And I hope, I hope you have followed through, all through. And now we are getting to the final part of that message. You know, let me say something, a testimony. When I became the, the leader of the church in Kenya, and the church was somehow, um, it, has a lot, it had a lot of what we call deficiency. <laughs> and, 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 and you watch the church members and the leaders and you could detect the gap between the real and the ideal. You know, there are those two levels, the real and the ideal. Hallelujah. And I, and I remember one, uh, we, we used to live in Kemadi Estate, and I remember uh, I wanted to purchase a house there. And the time I engaged in getting a new house, the cost was 2.5 million Kenya shillings. After two years, after two years, three years, the cost of a, of a house in that estate increased so much that when I want to check again, it is 12 million. The rate of inflation, the rate of commercial value, whatever they call it, and does not commensurate with the rate of blessing and growth in the church. Hello, praise God. Ugenda kanisani wapendwa unaambia watu a million ni shida. You know, when you stagnate, there are things that you can't prevent. The world will continue changing. Is it okay? The cost of living will continue inflating. Your stagnation will not prevent changes. If you, go, if you don't go to school or you don't get exposed or you are not trained and you lock yourself somewhere, that will not prevent the world from improving and getting modern and better. So you wake up one, you wake up one day and realize that the gap is too much that you can't be able to measure to the level of improvement. Do you know there are times that you stagnate so much? Until when you rise up and try to respond or to react or to act, you can only give up. If you don't move faster, the world you still move faster. If you become late, kuna makati utamuka upate mambo ni mengi sana hujafanya until you glad into crisis and in, in, instead of acting, you end up giving up. Hello, praise God. Hallelujah. And remember, th there, are some, there are some property, those who know Tashia, Pipeline Estate, eh? there, those plots were acquired by a very funny politician in Kenya. You know him, MP for Bakasi. He was my friend. Lakini yukua na muawopa jameni. Uja maugera na ugeza kufa any time. Siasa zigine baya. Ali akachukua mashaba ya NSSF akakawia muongeke na akasema you people be armed whoever comes to to ask you anything shoot and I can't be in such environment na alikuwa ananiitia plot 10,000 kisha shillings come chukua bishop at the kanisa I avoided niliopa but when that issue was tabled in parliament they agreed that the people who took over that land by force. They allowed to stay there, but be given chance to buy it through tenant purchase scheme. I came back, nikitaka plot. Unakuta masa imoja hapo. Inakuabia hasa unataka plot wewe. Eta pesa. Niliogopa when it was 10,000. I purchased that plot at 1.8 million. Hello, praise God. Today is very prime. If you want that plot for me, I can sell it to you at 40 million 
but I don't want to do that. It's now 50 million. Do you know what happened? After buying that plot, two, three years later, the price had inflated to 25 million. And then you ask yourself, in the church, who has had such an improvement to commensurate or to meet, to measure up with the demand and the growth? And, and I came to understand the gap is becoming too big between the people that we have in the church and the status of life, where they are, and what is required in the market. The kind of force, the kind of authority, financial authority, the kind of heart, you know, there's what, what Martin Luther King used to call the sorrow force, the sorrow force. The authority that we need in the church. And, and, I, and I say now, we are the people who need to buy property for the church. Because the church is existing in the world. And we don't have special prizes for Christians. Are you understanding? It is the same price for all people. Hallelujah. If Christians don't arise and take dominion as the original purpose and calling by God. We will actually, if you go to any building, there is what we call exit door, exit. The world will show us the exit. And you have people in the church who don't have command in the society. Command in commercial life command when they get out there you have people in the church who are jumping and praising but when they get out the out of the gate they are not the kind of people that you thought you have in the church the bible says we shall be the head and not the tail but the reality is christians practically in the market have become tail and that led me to serious prayer I said, God, I can't lead the church, which is not true. You know, there's a life you live, which is not true. You look at the scriptures, the God we serve, and the people who claim to serve that God, the gap is too big. The God we serve says, my children shall be the head, not in heaven, but in this life. They shall be the head and not the tail in this life. They shall be beneath, if you check the scriptures, they shall be beneath and never, they shall be above and never beneath. Actually, when God talks about being above, he says, they shall be above and never beneath. That's the statement, the standard of life from the mouth of God. And yet we come around here, wherever we are, Africa, whatever, we praise and we sing well. But the truth, the standard that God has for his children when we get to the world where we are supposed to be the head, right there, is not practical. I said to God, God, there's something wrong in the church. I said, there's something wrong. People live without goals. You know, the other day I met the MP for Lamu. You know, Lamu right now has reserve for petroleum and uh, it could be even more than what we have in nigeria some people saw that 15 years ago and brought some what we call is it some war they said that we want to throw away people from this place. You know why? Because we know later there is oil here. You see, and of course, they reacted against Christians. Christians should leave this place. Christians should leave this place. Now, you know what? They had long term goal for that area. Long term? Unakuta we mukristo unatusukuma tu. Jamo wengine wameka jeshi kwa msitu hapo wasema some people should live because waliona kwa mbali kuna mafuta itatokea. 
And you know we have the most modern port now. Alongside Indian Ocean, the most modern port is Lamu. Hello? We want to hear, I want to hear my church member is, is an MP. I can't be an, an MP, but I want to hear in the congregation of an MP. You know, I thank God for whole years. Of late, I'm living a very strange life. Strange, not strange among men. It is strange because of who God is. You know, I'm, there are some people who are coming into my life. I can understand. Members of parliament, governors. Somebody comes and says, Bishop, can I see you? Yes. What do you want? Can you allow me? Can you allow that I be, you become my spiritual father? People who are CEOs. You know, hello, praise God. The other day somebody called me. He's a billionaire. Billionaire. The person who had those property. For people like President Uhuru, they manage their property. A bishop, I'll be looking for you. I would like you to be my pastor. I said, the prayer works. That now, billionaires want to be attached with the anointing in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. You know, I was surprised one day, one of the members said, you know, Bishop, we met with governor, a very rich man in Kenya, and mentioned my name. I said, please go and tell Bishop. I want to come to his office. He's one of the most rich people, governors in Kenya. We've not met for long. I didn't know how to handle the governor in my office. And the way he's rich, I had to have my office painted and decorated. And my boardroom chair to be to appear like five star less tolerant and hotel. <laughs> ah, and the date he wants to visit, you know, I've been away for a week. I didn't have time to prepare that. So I selected some people in the church to do the work. Naturiketi to Kaongea. Today the wife to the governor speaks to my wife almost every evening. You know, we I don't relate with the pretension. I never receive their money. I don't even invite them for fundraising. We relate in real life. Bishop, can you be pastor to my children? I like that. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And when I prayed for the church, about that, that year, I prayed all through until we could have developed some difference with my wife. Ugereta matuda tunakuja kunibariki sema hii ni ya nani? Ya nani? Any food that you could donate to my house. My wife again react. Sababu anapikia nani? Because I remember that year I prayed beyond 200 I prayed and fasting beyond 200 days. It was extensive and deep. I said I want to dig deep. I want to get to the truth of the riches of God and bring them to the church. I can't be a, a pastor of people who are irrelevant. You know you can be irrelevant. I, I, I changed his life. You know Washida was, we, we, we've not known each other for a long time. I found him singing somewhere in a barrio. I said, now brother, who are you? Nikanua si dizake, nikampatia futano. Akasikia kama ni pesa jiki akatoroka. Ah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Bwana asikwe sana. Hallelujah. I I I, I is my prayer that anybody who is attached to my life become rich and take dominion. Hallelujah. Before we get to heaven. Na hata ukifa even when you die, when you be viewing your body in case you die before us. We can confirm from your face, the face of the dead person, that you died in peace, not in struggle. 
You know, some people tell them rest in peace, but they don't rest in peace. <laughs> you know, the other day, one of our pastors, the superintendent of city mortuary, he said, Bishop, I have a, I have a question that is a struggle in my mind. He says, whenever a sinner, a drunkard, a drug addict, those gangsters, whenever they die and they are brought to the city mortuary, normally their hands are bent. But whenever a saved person dies, they, are not, they normally stretch straight and they are so peaceful. I niambia ilibidi wanunue nyumbo special ya kulainisha mili. Kulainisha mili ya wenye thabi. Hello? Buwana asifiwe. To God be the glory. I pray even when we die, whoever you view our body after death, we will confirm we died prosperous and peaceful. We died seeing angels welcoming us to paradise. Hallelujah. We never died seeing the fallen angels. We died seeing the active holy angels welcoming, welcoming us to heaven. We died having finished the race. We died with heritage. We don't want to die with the children who are drug addicts. You know some of you, you are working very hard. But I always remind people when you grow older, what matters most is the children, even if it is one. That kid, that boy that you have, that girl, and I want to tell you parents, you have authority over them. We, we are, no, in the church, we practice God, family, governmental order, not what we have in the constitution here. You know, Christians have messed up. You go to Muslim, they never change their faith and their family order. Go to Buddhist. Go to, I, 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 the other day I went to UK. The Indians are taking over the economy. When, they, when their parents grow older, they don't take them to homes. They stay around to teach grandchildren their culture and their faith and their practice and their language. Nyinyi mumeaza kuiga wazungu. It's good you have the dollar. But tell these people, you know, when, when those guys from India come here, you know, they take over, they concentrate on the good things, education and businesses. But they keep their culture. You, you come here, you embrace everything, even the dressing. Musukwa kifa kama chura unavaa hivo. And hear this, it has effect on our children. Hallelujah. Ukera Las Vegas, whatever, watoto wabwa mechafuka sana ni wano wa Christo. We in this church, we are rising up in a culture whereby we will grow old when our children have received enough priesthood from us. We are the priest in our houses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me do something you can, you can do. Don't fear your son. However soft, however complicated or technological, philosophical that boy is. You are the dad. Yes. And there's nothing wrong. You are, not, you are not negotiating the position. There's no debate about it. You are. And nobody should teach you about it. You know it. Hallelujah. 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 Let me do something some, some you should do. Every week, if God is, if it's possible, call them. Command them to bow down. Lay hands on them. Practice that. You see the effect. If your son can bow down, that one has a lot of effect. As a parent, you are releasing priesthood. You are releasing prophetic authority. Either he is understanding or he's not understanding. Do it. It will work. Either me fuga macho or me fugua. Where can I be It will work. Hallelujah. And that's why I'm saying this. You see, when I was praying, 
my prayer was God restore the original promise of the church I pray that Christians should be the CEOs Christians should be in the parliament those where they make policies we want our members to be there to represent our faith in decision making Lord we want Christians whereby when we come to fundraising we don't have to struggle it's a matter of one, two, three people covering some project in a special, glorious way. And I prayed about it. And one day, when I was deep in prayer, heaven was open. Brothers, I'm not able to explain what I saw because I wish you could go there and see it. I saw riches, glory of God. The have to and God said to me, you uh, God said to me, look at what I'm showing you, my servant. This is the riches I have for my children. And God said, Go and tell them to come to me and make a covenant with me in relation to what I've shown you. Not in relation to their background. Not in relation to how you are placed of employment. Not in relation to the standard you are brought up in. In relation to the glory, the riches that have shown you. Yes, sir. And God gave me a warning. He said, go and tell all people who stood in the altar. Never, never to declare that there is lack. You know, one of the problems we have in churches, can you look at me? Most of the altars reflect the standard of their membership. That is wrong. The altar should not reflect the standard, your standard. The altar should reflect the standard of God. Is my work as a prophet to appear before God, obtain the mind of God, bring it to the altar so that the mind of God will change you. So that when you come to the church, the church will change you to the standard that God has put in his altar. You come in poor, we change you from being poor to rich. Altar has standard for you are being rich. You come to the church crying. We wipe your tears. Altar has a new standard for your marriage. You come to the church tortured. Altar has a voice for you. You come to the altar, to the church confused. We have knowledge from heaven concerning your issue. Hallelujah. We don't want that. Uh, you know, whereby I preach to people, they come to the church. And ask them for money. They say, Bishop, you know, don't, we know, you know we don't have money. You know what I do in the church these days? I don't correct the money you have. In the project I have, I pray for people by the anointing and the standard that I've obtained from God. And I tell them, I said to you now, go and become what I've prayed for. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if I tell you, give me this man, give me a million. Some a bishop, I don't have, you know, things. You bring a loud stories about what you are encountering, the standard of your family, the demands, the bills you are paying. You are not supposed to bring the standard. I'm supposed to bring the standard that God showed me. I'm supposed to cause you to become rich. I'm supposed to speak a blessing to your face and your hands. I'm supposed to speak glory of God, wisdom of God, discernment of God into your life so that when you get to the market, you are able to discern your possession and your space. Hallelujah! Oh my God. You know, that God said, my son, look at me. I saw the glory. God said, tell my people they are not going to do my work in their level. 
They are going to do my work in my level. They are going to build sanctuaries in my level. They are going to build families in my level. They are going to own business in my level. Tell these people to come before me and make covenant in the level of my glory. Not their level. You cannot put God down to operate in your level. You know, sometimes we wonder whether you have the true God. Because you are God. is God that you pull down. And you sometimes will like God to cry with you. Identify with your pain. And feel pain with you. It's okay. But if you go to a higher level, we talk about a higher level of redemption. God will like to elevate you from the pain. Hallelujah. After that, there is same among God removed him from the horrible pit and caused his feet to stand on the rock and put in his mouth a new song. God did not enter into the horrible pit. God cannot just come there and cry with you there. His standard is above the horrible pit. God will remove you, cause you to start and give you a new prophetic language. That's how God operates. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. You know, we, we, the other day I was in a bank and I was calling uh, one of the members of parliament because God has shown me that I'm going to put up a church in Nairobi City, a sanctuary of 10,000 members, one service. I anticipate before I get older, it will be three services. 10,000. And that one must happen. You know, I can speak like Elijah. Come by Jehovah, I shave you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I saw it clearly. Sanctuary, 10,000 seater. And a parking of about 100 cars or 300 cars. And a modern office complex. In Guinea, Ambao, Bishop Shogo Takujo Naono, Ashema Jehovah Mboyo. Where it's like a factory, an industry, where we'll be manufacturing things throughout. And what we manufacture in the church are new converts and disciples throughout. I want an office whereby I have a panel of disciple, uh, discipleship team who work day and night, about 20 people doing follow up day and night, fully paid, permanent. Mm, whereby we are dealing with new people projects daily throughout and other things and a tv already you have registered a tv station but i want to release it on the right timing because it has to be national it's not regional to taingia na timing and we take over the whole nation in jesus name so I was in the bank and I was calling this museum. I go, Bishop, it's three acres right inside Umoja One Estate. I said, I need it. I don't care the cost. What I care is the position of the Lord. <laughs> it is in the right place for my vision. She said, Bishop, we are selling it at 150 million. 150 million is even little money. The cost could be higher, but you come out with your I can be at the title D has a case in court. And the manager heard me speak about it. He said, Bishop, stop it. Don't you know one of your friends has a great, magnificent property which has been disposed? It has been all over, all over in our country. It's a property in Nairobi that is very key. In Atakiwa Atana Wakubawe Tukule. Hello, even my friend Apostle Kimani is going to attack you. Above all, somebody is that I didn't have to Number two, I'm going to attack. 
number two. You know what I mean? And I said, now, nah. I caught the lady. We met. You know, it's, we went to Baba Jimmy. We were negotiating and the bank people were here. It's a serious deal. And sometimes you are the am I really normal? You know, you know, you know when you are in, in when you are in high, in high school, you used to have question that would ask compare and contrast. You know, sometimes you compare and contrast. You are the am I really like a Timo that stays in Kawashukari? Chairman. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And then we uh, we went forward and we negotiated. You know, Bishop, we are selling this. We weren't going to sell half of the that part that is the real powerful. It has a bigger house more than the where, where we went for buy the clothes. Is it okay? Some it's bigger. It's two times KNG. And the office, oh, 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 oh. I think it's better than state house because I've been to state house twice. And the parking, we said, I want this one. He said, now, Bishop, the family price is 400 million. Uh, and I thought, I, 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 I declared, I decided to change. Not to change the deal, but pass right to change. You know, when you get to higher level and higher demands, you need to change to that level. I needed the anointing of that level, the might of that level, the feeling of that level, the attitude of that level. I said, my wife, now I want, you know, my wife, I want to pray, and I want to go for more than, if, if possible, more than forty days prayer and fasting. I want to go to God. I want to see His glory again. You know, it happened, and. Uh, I remember when we met the second time and I looked at the seller, he said, Bishop, I'm unable to negotiate with you. We presented the price of 340 million. To come and be or do 60 million. To come and say, Bishop, I'm unable to argue with you. I can say, my Bishop, I cut a 60 million. And I prayed, I prayed. Actually, when, when I was adding the prayer on, on 45th day, I think almost 50 days, I think I did it here, when I landed here. I didn't know how to start. You know, you pray for a longer time, you don't know how to eat. I don't know how to resume eating. And God appeared to me and said, I command you, when you go back, Go and raise, go and raise 400 millionaires. Go and raise, hear this, they are not millionaires, but go and raise them. Hallelujah. Hiya, it's going to happen. Let me say, within one year, by the grace of God, we have cleared the 340 million and the 60 million about Rikatiwa to Tavanya and Mabahapo, Bishop Takuna Hubiri Kaniso, Unasema, Amen, and you hear the echo. Amen. That one must happen. Amen. It has been passed in heaven, Amen. it is reviewed on earth. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Oh, Satan has nothing, nothing, he has no right in that issue. He has the fire around that project. It's too hot. Even no demon can dare visit that issue. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I was sharing with Bishop, and some of you, I heard some of you, George, Chairman, Bishop, Bishop, we need to be there. You know, I don't need, I don't need, need you to be a millionaire. God has given me anointing to raise you a millionaire. Hallelujah. 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 And what, if I can get 100 here, 300, not 100 or 50, whatever, I know 300 are right there in Kenya. After this meeting, I'm going to make an announcement. I, I don't need millionaire. I need people that I can translate to be millionaires. Amen. And God said, go and anoint them. Do you know something? 
God, you raise them, two things happen. God, you raise them to that level. They will give that million and they will be millionaires. That's the benefit. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, Papa Jimmy, is a, Papa Jimmy is a product of that. One time I announced that. He said, Bishop, you know, he didn't have money. Bishop, I want to give a million. Why? I want to be a millionaire. Straight away things open. Amen. And 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 we, we, we agree with the, with the bishop. Whoever wants to become a millionaire, I don't need the money you have now. I don't need the condition you are in now. I just need you and your faith. If you don't have faith, go and tell God you are using the faith of Bishop Katimu. Go and tell him. Hiya. Go and say it. It will work. Even if you feel a demon around, just tell a demon, I'm using... I'm, Coming to you in the name of Jesus by the faith of my bishop. Demons, you are free from you. Can you try it one day? Just connect yourself with my faith. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I was telling people here, there's a lady I prayed for. She's very rich. And neighbors decided to destroy her business through witchcraft. They raised some money and sent one of them to a very strong witch. I think in Tanzania. The one who was sent came back with a testimony. It was my testimony. She found a witch right inside where they operate. The witch said, woman, the person you want to destroy, is she saved? Yes. And the witch said, does she belong to this church that I hear? Apostolic Faith Church Bahati? Yes. And which said is Bishop Gatimo, her bishop. Yes, if that is her bishop, you can't destroy her. Yes. So she came to no juggle market. She's moving and saying, no, Me, I can't understand who is Bishop Gatimo to witches. I say, They know me. They know me because of the glory of Christ and the battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And a small girl in the church one day disappeared. She was lured into Satanism. And they blamed that girl. She could not, she could appear like she is normal, but lost the real senses. The sense that she is in school, the sense that she belonged to a family, the sense that, you know, that's those senses, eh? I think they call it, it's a hypnosis. I don't know how the, what light word to use. And, and the girl remained. We couldn't tell where she is. And she told me, you no, know, she asked, she was one night, I don't know, during late at night, she said, Bishop, I found myself under the sea in a meat of strange beings led by Lucifer. And there was this celebration because I'm getting initiated. But before they did that, they asked, which church do you belong to? Apostle Fisher, but that's okay. Who is your bishop? Bishop Gatimu. Mentioning my name, they all fell in masses. And they said, get out! That bishop will destroy us. That's how she found herself in the church and back to the family. I said to you, friends, we have nothing to negotiate with the devil. To memorize And the anointing we have is clear and final. We are not doing any guesswork. If we say you are free, you should be free. Amen. If we say certain stop, he should hear that. Amen. Amen. The anointing spread that way. And by the grace of God, we are succeeding. We have no room for fear. 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 Right. Hallelujah. And we are confined. And we, you know, Oktaku Fauru, concentrate on one Confine yourself on one clear voice. We are confined on what God is saying and who he is. Not the suggestions of man. 
nor the opinion of neighborhood. We know God and what he says. And because God is on our side, we are winners. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Amen. Amen. So if you want to join us in that, please, maybe pass Bishop, you organize the Bishop here. We will pray for you. Listen, we are not taking any money from Lakewood Apostolic Faith Fellowship. Bishop, <laughs> we are going to make you rich here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are raising millionaires. All what we need in Kenya is your million. But millionaires remain here. If you don't understand it, try it. And maybe after one year we will talk about we will talk. Let me be sure you raise millionaires for you here. And this is what God will do. Whenever you have a project now, the next phase, this, there will be no issue. You just need 10, 3 people to handle issues here. Unasema nani yako na milioni yake, nani yako na angiri kumi 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 ne, unahesabu na maliza, unana mengine. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. In just Christ's name. So, before we finish everything today, make sure you get into that. Don't. And I wait. when we leave this place, we literally come back. We don't want to come back easily because we are very, very busy. But don't lose that opening. It's not my money. It is kingdom money. It is kingdom connection. I saw the glory and God commanded me. Go and tell pastors, bishop, and church people to come to me and make covenant with me that corresponds to the glory that I've shown you. Let people make covenant with God based on who God is and what he has. And God will raise you to a standard. And you'll be a servant of God, of God's standard. Not your own standard. Not your background, but his standard. That's how you should be and who you should be. And the joy of the Lord will be our strength. The joy of the Lord will be our strength. And the house of God will be house of joy, a refuge, and a center of deliverance. May the Lord bless and keep you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And by the way, we will have command in life. Command in purchasing command. Business command. Assets command. Amen. And you lead your family with authority. And God will use you among your siblings and family members as person who will wipe away tears and those discouragement as you move loud saying, Thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord. You will become prophetic. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Now, let me read a, a, a scripture. Let's go to Genesis chapter 13. Uh, we will take less of time now. I think it's a few minutes. I'll be through. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are you okay? Are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Bishop, sparkling. Genesis chapter 13. Hallelujah. Verse 14 says, And the Lord said to Abram, after the Lord had separated from him, lift your eyes. Say after me, lift your eyes. Are you hearing what? That lift your eyes now. Look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Lift your eyes now. Amen. 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 Oh, Lift your eyes now. Where? After this separated with this nephew, lift your eyes now and look from where you are. Where you are. I'm creating
creating a dimension of life from where you are eastward, westward, north and south and look from the place where you are northward, southward, eastward and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendant also could be numbered. And the person said, Arise, walk in the Lord through its length, its width, for I give it to you. Hallelujah. One of the things that God wants to do now in this service, now in this service, is to cause somebody to embrace a vision. You know, you could be seated the way you are right there, but right in you, you are not the way we see you. Something is bigger than where you are. Something is glorious than who you are. You know, what God does first, God comes into your life and causes you to see. Before you get there, you see. Before you step in, you see. Before you, where you are, you could be somewhere insignificant. Somewhere that you can't even be able to, 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 to relate with the people comfortably because your position, your social status is not good. But from where you are, before you make any move, God wants to put in your mind the extent of the vision, the extent of your riches, the extent of your inheritance, the that is the extent of the glory he has ordained for you. And God says, from where you are, my brother, where you are, I would like to create a mobility. I would like to destroy stagnation. I would like to destroy a condition. I would like to destroy an attitude and a mentality by commanding you to raise your eyes and you look east and west, look north and south, and the voice of God you command east, the voice of God you command west, north, and south. Before, before, Abram used to see the north. Before, he used to see the south. Before, he used to see the east and west. But now this time, it's not the way he used to. It's God who is saying, raise your eyes and look again for whatever you have been seeing in the east and west. I'm going to speak about it. Before he would speak, he would look to the west and desire. Look to the east and desire. But God says, now I'm going to speak about your east, west, south, and north. God said, this what I say about what you see. Whatever you have seen belongs to you and your descendants. Hallelujah! Before maybe Abraham would visit and feel now, this is too expensive. Before then, Adam will move around and feel threatened. You know, these days, people can threaten you by the way they appear. So she just Start status. Somebody drives a car around you. It's okay. You appreciate the blessing, but it's threatening. And that's why, you know, when David was raised by God and saw King Saul called this man, do you know the first question Saul asked David was a social status question. He said, Whose son are you? In other words, what status in the society have you come from? Is your family remarkable? Is your family, you know, what they call in Kenya di dynasty? You know, is whose father? Whose father are you? 
Hallelujah. Sometimes in Nairobi, if you go to restaurants, you know, the first time I preached in those areas, I preached in Lovington Church. I was driving a K70 old car. KYB is known by our people. <laughs> so what I did, I parked the car outside the gate. Because the church where I was ministering is a church full of blessed people and you know, whatever, the CEOs, cabinet secretaries. I preach a sermon, not a status sermon, but heavenly sermon. Amen. It was so moving. I said to him, you know, you people are very busy. I want to leave. I didn't want them to know. It's a church where you preach. And the first thing they ask you, where have you parked your car? Because they don't agree you can preach without a status. I didn't want to answer that question. But the person who followed me was the wife to the commissioner of police. They were my friends. And the question was asked, where have you parked your car? I said, woman, don't worry. Let me leave. I said, bishop, you don't even want our lunch or maybe tea. No, no, I'm busy. Tosheka, Tosheka. <laughs> Another time, I preached in St. Andrew's PCA and I was conducting Holy Communion. It's a status in PCA, that's the highest church you know around. And I was leading this communion, apostolic faith pastor, conducting Holy Communion in PCA church, St. Andrew's. It was 3,000 people. I tell you, I did it better than Levi Duajau. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. And doctors, whatever. But you know what? That time, many, many, many years ago, I was staying in Dadora. I didn't want them to know I stayed in Dadora. I boarded Kenya bus number 37. <laughs> Nikashukia Serena Hotel. I walked. And I used Murango Ile Ambao Sio popular. I did the good work. I tell you it was powerful. Ooh, powerful. I didn't want the question. Where have you parked your car? So after that, Nikasarimi Ataka Yubi Haikweko. Haikweko. I saw I greeted doctors, you can be sure, whatever. I didn't want to go to the vestry. Siku ataka analysis and whatever. Where you know, nani you may talk about it. Nika chomoka. Nika yada serena hotel. Nika gojia bus number 37. You see, you live in a world where you see things. But you don't have strength to identify with them. You are qualified. By anointing, you are qualified. But you look at the east, west, north, and south. You are demire. This is a good hotel. You have mouth and capacity to enter the hotel. Maybe. But God can change you. Until now, today, look north, south, east, and west. And now I have a new statement for you. I give you the east. I give you the west. I give you the north. I give you the south. And it shall be yours. You have capacity to live there. Capacity to possess it. You know, we used to live in an estate where the landlord was very tribal. And where others are paying 18,000, I will pay house rent of 35,000. Now, I akanitusi, akachokora mafuta. He don't ask, I don't ask, I declare by anointing, I don't ask, I don't and the morning when I woke up, I had, that time I had a lad cruiser. 
when I woke up, instead of driving to the church office, I drove to where I think good houses are. And I remember negotiating a house of 12 million without even having any money in the account. To an extent, the owner and I know you are done now. How? Which? Where? When? You know those questions. The faith is there. The houses that I used to see, I now feel I should own one. I don't have money, but I have the voice and I have God who is confirming it. Jamali kwa mjeruo bana tuna negotiate na pigia wakina and also 12 million ikawa na kashida kidogo nikasema oh hiyo nimepuka hiyo nikaenda fedha estate 18 million cuz ah, these people are expensive for nothing the house is not i needed a you know you, i even had a, a view of the kind of house i need i need a house with with good parking in a house that is quiet real residential kwa ba nikienda nitasikia nimeenda nyumbani See your Jogo Road. <laughs> and I, I remember one time I met a man, Kabia Bishop. Don't you know that bishops don't live in Don Home? They don't live in Father Estate? Walihama Mapema. Walieda Wapi. Akabia my bishops asa wanakaga Mobasa Road, Modaiga, Wanakaga, Kurelunda. <laughs> and I tell you, within two months, you know, God is powerful. You know, I was able to be in the house. Within two months, I called the owner of the hot house. I called the owner of the hot house. And my wife had gone to school. He used to work in special school. He can be a mama. Please, uh, I've carried all things in the house except our bedroom because you have to organize it. He can be a mama. He can be a mama. He can be a mama. He can be a there's a kind of anointing that God's put in you. You see, can you look, look at me? When God anointed David, that boy still remained the same laddie boy with the shepherd bag and the sling. But the condition had changed. And that's when, when David and he found people running away. The anointing could not allow him to run away. Right. The same ruddy boy, the same age, the same equipment, shepherd bag and the sling, but the condition inside has changed. Right. When he look at the east, he possessed the east. Yeah. And that's why he said, now, why are you running away? And people say, have you not heard about the giant? Yeah. And David said, show me the giant. And the anointing from inside started to speak it is the same david the same kilograms the same height but the condition has changed and if i said what will be given to a man who will kill god here and remove shame from israel and the brother said no you know david according to the system was at the age in Israel, you can only be enlisted as a soldier at the age of 20 years minimum. Right. David was 17. Yes. So that's why even when, you know, the Rogers have their own views, but when the dad was called to invite the sons, he did not invite David. To, the best answer to give as to why the father did not invite David is because of other age. And when they went to the battle, they will say, now, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who, how can he defy the armies of the Holy God? How? Pakanaza kuitza mushahara. Niki gaheo, nyabede, ndari kia jabeno. May God change from you from inside. 
you could be the same person it is from where you are that god is showing you the position you are where you are but when you look at the east god has changed the way you feel about east god has changed the way you feel about north and south god has put in you the spirit of taking dominion the spirit of right ownership the spirit of the right possession i said to you god has your possession in mind hallelujah hallelujah you know god will not only give you your property but he'll give you property to be inherited by your descendants hallelujah. i announce this to you Amen. the god you make you rich Amen. not for your own life now Amen. but for generations to come after you Amen. and that's why god said to abraham abraham it is your lord yes. and it is the lord for your descendant i say receive the power to become blessed even for your descendants and every demon that have been discrediting you from that level of blessing i rebuke it now in the name of jesus christ every power of hell every evil altar that has been speaking in your family i destroy it now by the blood of jesus hallelujah and from today receive the right altar the road I says in this church there are people whose family you know what you did you just grew up in an altar that you never cared to check its name and its function do you know some of you even in America you are struggling but there are strange things that throw you every year. It's because you just got married and grew up. You never cared about the altar that was placed in that family by your fathers and forefathers. So however much you struggle, there's an altar that speaks. Right now I want to destroy those strange altars. <laughs> Hallelujah! You find that however much you work, marriages never work in your family. However much you invest, your children have strange spirits. Have you ever noticed that your son and your daughter become so strange beyond even what you can think? And you are struggling with that. I have authority by the blood of Christ to destroy that altar that speaks in your family i break it now by the blood of Jesus christ by the blood of christ and from today from today from today i declare the altar of the blood of christ altar of the blood of christ altar of the blood of christ to speak in your family Shakatarabazika. oh hallelujah the altar that changed the way you feel things. Before you could view north, south, and east, and you are subjected to the discrimination and threats that exist among men. Today, you don't fear any man. You don't fear any woman. God anoints you with his capacity and his mind and his position for you. In just name, Pia Yesu Makofi. Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe? Do you believe it? The Lord is so powerful. We may not proceed from this. Time is gone. You go and point to the Billy. He's on it. I care fridge. Ha 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 you, you, uh, let me just say this. You see, one of the things that God wants to clear in my mind and your mind is a clear vision of who your God is. You know, the problem we have, the problem we have is between our mind 
and the breakthrough with God who exists. Most people are struggling with faith in God. Your reasoning is a problem. God is so supernatural that your natural have failed to comprehend him. You know what people call faith in the church is just agreeing that God is there but not active faith. Are you understanding? Most people, it's not faith that works. It is just a kind of faith in God who you believe is supernatural but you don't know how, how, how to walk and how to behave with him. And time has come, you push your faith to a level where the God who is supernatural becomes supernatural now. Amen. God who appeared to be so strange becomes a friend. God who used to touch people, God who could speak to Red Sea and create highway becomes so real. The Lord who could raise the dead becomes so real. Pastors, we need to bridge the gap. Sometimes we talk about God raising Lazarus. We talk about Jesus healing Bartimaeus. We talk about Christ feeding the 5,000. And the church has been left with imagination of the past. The past was so good. The present is not applicable. The Jesus sometimes we have in our families is Jesus of history. But not Jesus of now. The Christ of past in Galilee could raise the dead. The Christ who walked on water. The Christ who could perform miracle to Simon Peter in the Lake Galilee. The Christ who could come and whenever somebody would touch that Jesus to get healed. We want to relocate him from history to now. Yes, yes, yes. We need to bridge the gap, friends. Yes. People are dying of cancer. People are dying on some of some strange attack. You know, we just praise and worship God with the diseases. Well, as people feel, if the Jesus of God would be here, nobody would come to the church and get out sick. Right. Check your Bible. Bible says, whoever came to Jesus was healed. Yes, oh, we want the Jesus of God in this history. Yes. We want him now. The gap is becoming too much. We are worshippers who, who God, whose God is not becoming real. We are religious Christians, but not practicing Christians. Or rather, we are just social Christians. Living because Christ is good. He is only hope, but not experience. We want to push our faith. Push our faith like Elijah. He prayed the first time. And he said, uh, the third said, there's no crowd. Play the second time. There's no sign of rain. There's third, the fourth, the fifth, the seventh time. Yes. The man said, I see now the crowd. Wrestling prayer. I want to bring God into the reality of this life. I can't be suffering of curses, sicknesses, where last the God I serve is a miracle working God. We want to bridge the gap. And Abraham in covenant, God one day bridged the gap. You know when you go to UK and you board, an, I, I don't know that it is here, uh, in, a, in a train, before you board the train, you know, bridge the gap, no, no, might the gap, might the gap. I don't know, I've not boarded a train. Hapa hakuna, amuna yon sana, nyini watu wa dege. Hallelujah. Let me a verse, only one verse. In Genesis chapter 17, the Bible says, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him again. And the Bible says, When God appeared this time, He appeared to confirm His character and His reality. Because, you know, Abram, before God appeared to him, He used to worship other gods. And from the time God appeared to him, you know the perception that Abraham had is that he has a God among God. 
You know, Abraham would do around 10 people. Oh, you are still worshiping the moon, yes. You are still worshiping the sun, yes. You are still worshiping that donkey, yes. It's okay, but uh, it's okay. Continue with your God, I have mine. My God is Jehovah. You know, Abraham could honor other people gods because he thought he is worshiping his God who is God among gods. And God wanted to come clearly in the mind of Abraham. He said, Abraham, I would like you to clearly understand who I am. I am not God among gods. I am the only God. Whatever is called God beside me is not God. I am the, the only God. And God said to Abraham, I am almighty God. All sufficient God. All power that is required is within me. Abraham, I'm so sufficient that in this age and age to come, you don't have to walk out of me to seek for anything outside. Inside me, there is sufficiency of power and grace. I am almighty God. That's who I am. El Shaddai, all sufficient, self-existing, unchanging God. I am the only one. Don't compare me with others. And, and God said to Abraham, I have a demand. Which one? From today. Walk before me blamelessly. Now, if you check in a deeper way, I, I like it in Kiswahiri. Kukamilika is be complete in me and let me know from you, your side, Abraham, that you are satisfied with who I am, that you are not waiting for another one, and you are not, you don't have an alternative to me. I'm, to me, I'm complete in you. Walk before me blamelessly. Now, look at what this. The Bible says, the eyes of the Lord move to and fro across the whole world, that he may show himself strong on behalf of those people whose hearts are perfect towards him. God wants a heart that is perfect towards him. There's something that God, if he proves that in you, you'll be happy. If God knows very well, there's no way you can backslide. There's no way you can do evil. There's no way you can fail to trust him. You perfect your heart towards him. God can just trust you with anything. You know, you know when God tested Abraham in Genesis 22, you know when God tested Abraham, he said, now Abraham, I now know you fear me. Since you never withdrew, withheld, withheld your only son from me. I now know, I now know. God wants to know from you. I said God wants to know from you. Yeah. Don't just wait there. God wants to know from Bishop Gatimo that I truly fear him and I can be anything for him. Clear yourself before God. I say clear yourself before God. Yeah. Let God know you cannot fornicate. Let God know you cannot fail him. Let God know you cannot fail in his promise. Prove yourself. Present yourself unto God as a person who has no reason to be ashamed. Clear yourself. I say clear yourself. Clear yourself. Let God know. Let God know. God is waiting to know. And that's why God said to Abraham, I now know. I now know. Although God is all-knowing, justice demands that you prove your faith. I now know. I now know, Abraham, you really love me. I know you fear me. And that's why God repeated the blessings to Abraham with a vow. 
he said i now vow by my name blessing i'll bless you multiplying i'll multiply you the heta naritu alia kwa nie gai todiri uge ige heta na kegole ya kwa da kwa edi wiradhi mosi amu hetwa i say clear clear the way friends let god know after testing this one cannot fornicate you know people are not so clear kuna watu hapa atatania anajua ukifungua pahali na kasichana utayayuka tu within two days abe we acharia we no yo wakira ndo mwanze sana i know some some old people want want to tell us that they are clean because of being old you are never holy because of being old it's only that is the age is a strength kama leo ukaikuwa steam of fufuke ukaikuwa mkora sana eh aga drake honoka kira ni ngurire na wika the kaitanu we hallelujah bwana asifiwe i hear this fresh what do you know if you know very well that your wife is a very clear woman your husband is a very clear man it causes you to live with health and you can be anything to her you can be anything to him so ni kweli what about if 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 you are not clear there are areas that hutapita utakona stuka unajua kuna kuna wamama hapo ukimsalimia mzee atakuletea shida sababu eto takiridha gwo wake the ladies come up here are you sister god bless you hallelujah akicheka tu mzee oh ni dona kule odhia gutheka hallelujah you, you, you see there's something relational there's something relational with god not just worshiping not just jumping here let it be known by the devil let it be known by god that that girl who is singing here cannot betray god i know let it be known for god to say i now know you fear me and therefore now god can be anything to you and you can also be anything to god at that level friends you enjoy fellowship with god you enjoy fellowship with god we also you also enjoy the ministry of angels you know angels are also comfortable with somebody who is predictable if angels are sent on saturday morning they know jaroga will be in the church if angels are sent to check when there was some turmoil and problems who survived they know kamau and jane those ones went through they are known to fear god ejo can locate you because they know they can even suggest where you are you are known you are so clear to ejos and god you are so clear if god today today give you maybe 10000 god knows very on sunday there will be a thousand dollar tithe that's right atata kuulizwa unajulikana such people ah can only just be blessed god can only be received receive 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 and the struggle people even up in the church struggle of prayer we will see whereby you struggle so much to believe you struggle so much to attain a miracle you struggle so much to believe for breakthrough clear the way until god can be anything to you and you can be anything to him if you have a son today aboke mwambia kibia anakimbia you know what do you feel when you tell your son can you take this phone to bishop and you just see him walk there's something that grows in you you feel this flow flow between your heart and your son that's how god operates if god is sure that when he said you you obey you create something in his heart a flow a flow and that's why some people are blessed in a multiple way because sometimes god chooses one people uh, one person in four ways when he spoke you obeyed at that time he spoke you obeyed at that time he spoke you obeyed 
So you bear four blessings that ought to have been distributed to other people. You become so blessed because you qualified in four ways. Clear the way. Let, let, let it be known that God is real. And the life I'm living is real. And the worship I'm making is real. And the service I'm lettering to God is real. And my heart is clear about my calling. I'm not doing guesswork. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Time is gone. Time is gone. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I know you are here to do things. You are here to heal. You are here to restore sight. You are here, oh God, to revive that which Satan has tried to kill. You are here, oh mighty God, to restore order. As I pray now, I want to pray for your heart. You have noticed in your life there's a pattern of failure. There's a pattern of attack. There's a pattern of pain. However much you try, it is following you all through. I want to destroy Satan and that evil altar that is following your family and your children. Right now, as I study, I'm doing it. I'm doing it by the blood of Christ. I'm doing it by the blood of Christ. I'm basa tarabosika rimama shatarababosaya. The Lord showed me people here who are struggling. You work very hard. You desire the joy. You desire the best. But there's a unique painful struggle that ever follow you. I'm sent by God with anointing to release you from that struggle. So painful. If they ever follow you, your project never flourish. Your joy, if not, is not long lasting. You live a life where by any time you can fail or you can be attacked. We are not going to live in speculation. God is declaring deliverance and God is declaring a new altar in your life as a youth, in your life as a single parent, in your life as a family. You have experienced death. Premature death. Young people are dying in your family. They should not be dying. They should live long. They should die when they are old. We don't want the deception of the devil. You are raising children who are becoming evil one after another. Your future appears to be attacked when your seed is attacked. We can't allow that. You came here for deliverance. Hallelujah. You are living in a marriage where Satan is speaking throughout. There is no way you can't even enjoy. You just stay for two days and you get to the original painful. Painful life is the normal life in your marriage. Joy is something that just comes and it disappears often. We cast that altar of Satan. We destroy the claim of the devil. And declare the altar of the blood of Christ. If that is your prayer, I want to pray for you. If you are serious about it, I want to pray for you. Satan might, must give way and must leave you. Anybody that wants that prayer, can you please come here? Just come here. Just come here. There's power in the blood of the Lord. Just come here. Just come here. Just come here. Yokata pasata raboseka rima kata up center me kata pa just scrutinize your life scrutinize your family check your marriage check your life check your children and declare a new altar for your family come and claim it here it's happening right now right now there's a persistent failure in business unasaidia watu wenu mnafungua business inaanguka just come just come just come just come 
Just come, it's okay, brother. It's okay, it's okay now. Sherari ba kataraba, mota pasata raba sikin. Things are changing, fresh. The Lord is raising an altar that you speak long life. The Lord is raising an altar that you speak a successful order of life. In Jesus' name, there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I said there's power in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shararaba katapasotari masakaraba bosaya. Matarabo soto reka papa shatarabo sina. Makatarabo soto rime seto rima sakaraba. Things are changing. Things are changing. Things are changing now, 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 now. Things are changing now. The blood of Christ is at work. The Holy Ghost is at work. Hallelujah. Hatuwezi kukubali. Tuatumishwa mugu wa naumia hivo. We can't allow that. We cannot allow that. It must stop. God raise an altar of life. Raise an altar of righteousness. Shakatara bo setenema. Makata po soto rika pasaka. Chirede. Just come. Come as you go to hapa. Kahapa. Let them do the rest. Shakatara bo seterere bazanda. Jesus Christ is Lord. 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 Inamikonayako too, something is happening. Mata pasatarabo sanda. Nina pasatiriba sakororobo. I rise against you, devil. I cast the foundation of the evil one. I break the yoke of Satan. I destroy the root of darkness. And mata posataribabo. Now bakataribo sanda. Oh, mother bow ya lana. Mother bow ya kifo. Mother bow ya magojwa. Mother bow ya cancer. Mother bow ya uremafu. Mother bow ya kifo. Abo imekwe kiongea. Katika mwiri wako. Na uzo wako. Na yagamizo. Kwa wezo wa dami ya yesu. Yes, continue praying. Abia mungu, now I'm changing. Lord, I'm changing. Lord, I'm changing. Now I'm changing, Lord. I'm changing. <sighs> Repent all the sin. Kira dhambi unajua ukonae. Repent it. Your own sin. Your own sin. The sin of your family. The sin. Kira wavu. Abiyabona, I clear now the way for myself and my family. I clear the way now for myself and my children. I now clear the way by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit, by the word of God. I clear my life. No demon, no evil has right over my life. No demon has power over my life. No evil, no curse has right over my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shut up, Asakarababu. You could be you could be there. You are not sure whether you are saved. Come here. I don't know to know what has happened. You are not sure. You love God so much, but you're not clear about the God you serve. You are not clear about Jehovah, the God of Abraham. Just come here. You are saying, I've lived a life that has no fear of the Lord. Toka kwa kiti uja hapa, maramoja. No si kubali kuwa na msaha. God, you cleanse you. God, you raise a standard in your heart. God, you raise a standard in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus. I destroy the claims of the devil. I cast the foundation of witchcraft, foundation of curses, foundation of antichrist. I destroy it now by the blood of Jesus. I destroy any curse of sin. I destroy any curse of disobedience. I destroy any curse from rebellion. I destroy every sacrifice, every evil, every program of the devil. 
katika maisha hao and now by the word of god i release a new altar a new altar katika nafsi hizi katika roho zao katika mili yao naangamiza sauti ya shetani na madhabahu ya giza ambayo imekuwa ikiongea kwao by the blood of christ oh the lord is setting you free oh father i give you praise my sister i release you from today rishipa setende masatoro posota riba bo rike posoto riba katapa pasaka because namika receive your healing and deliverance now i say receive it from today receive it your all chafu boy make we kiongea na yangamiza kwa uwezo wa damu ya yesu i release your soul from the devil i release you from today kutoka sasa i declare a new altar in your life Kota pesine maya you are delivered you are set free man of god from today no demon you are speaking your life the blood of christ takes over hallelujah kutoka sasa mamlako mepewa god gives you authority to live satan has taken away authority and dominion receive no authority from the lord god almighty be na mashatarabo possess authority possess your deliverance kila sauti ya shetani ambayo imekuwa ikutawara na yangamiza kwa damu ya yesu from today i decree by the mouth of god a new altar oh the holy spirit takes over your life from today in the name of the lord jesus christ receive it Lift your hands to heaven. Now by the word of God. Kama Yehova Mungu wangu I save you. Kikao hicho hiyo that altar of the devil. Evil satanic altar that has always produced death, sicknesses and cash, failure and frustration. It is totally destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every sin. And curse. And demon. That have been operating there. They are removed. By the Holy Spirit. And the blood of Christ. And from today. By the word of God who sent me. I declare the order of the blood of Christ. And you shall come attest and confirm yes. it is done yes. from from today yes. from today yes. your life you have a new center yes. of authority kikogo na kimoyo na giothigu na kiohotani ne kiabelia kwalia then what to roaku in jesus name be healed now be healed be renewed. Hallelujah. Be rash. Yes. Receive blessings. In Jesus' name. Oh, we give you glory. Pigia Yesu Makofi. The Lord bless you. Amen. I I know we're going to meet in the covenant giving. Are you ready for greater blessing? Yes, sir. How many would like me to pray for you? I said we are I'm going to pray for people. Know that you have money. No, 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 no. Not that you have money you have kept for a project like the one you have in Kenya, but you want to believe God to give you. We are all that need in your life is faith. The rest you you're going to confirm is God who spoke. How many in this service would like to believe God to raise a million towards that project? How many? May my God you do it. So what you do, I may not be able, you know, to interact with you. Maybe Pastor Samson and Baba Jimmy, will you help me? Give us your name and your contact. Don't worry, we will start praying for you. We will, really, we will give you the communication later. And we believe God that one time very soon we will call you there to come and start in a portion of that land and say god i know the million i gave is part of this altar that speak in your generation all the days of your life amen i think you, you have see him or other person organize that bishop i'll be praying don't worry don't worry god you give 
I say, the Lord I serve, the Lord we believe in, you give. Amen. I'm not saying you have it. But I'm saying, God, you raise. Can you hear the word that God gave me? God, you raise you as a millionaire. Amen. You will give that million. Yes. And you will remain in the status of a millionaire. Yes. And I'd like to note this. This will affect this church. Because this church will be revolutionized. There will be gracious, anointed, flowing giving that you make this church great joy. In Christ, I release blessing on you. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God, God be the glory. To God be the glory. You may have a seat. You may have a seat. Oh, thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. What can we see but to bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Just have a seat. We are preparing lunch. Lunch is already uh, prepared uh, for each and every one of us. We are going to have lunch. Lunch, lunch. And then after lunch, we'll just go straight to giving. Uh, you know, you know, you know I, I, I love my bishop because he does not just run to ask for money. Whatever we have received from the Lord is bigger than money. The word of God. The word of knowledge. But yet we cannot give our money if we have not had something in our stomach. We have prepared lunch for you. We have a beautiful dining right on the right hand of my side. And uh, we don't want to keep you for long. We want you to have some lunch so that when you come to give that, that, that which you purpose and you had to give to the Lord towards this project and also the project that you know that God is going to make you a millionaire. I, I love this man of God, Baba Jimmy. Baba Jimmy is a millionaire from the church of our bishop. Dr. Judith, a millionaire. And let me tell you something as you continue to wait. Uh, I, I want to have a signal from the kitchen where the lunch is already served. I was in Kenya, February 13th of this year. And my bishop, we had a covenant for our churches in Kenya, the whole churches in Kenya. And we congregated in our, our center place called Kikope, where we have a big massive buildings. And we're putting up a very mega uh, building. And on the 13th of uh, February this year, just last month, I was there. And we raised through the anointing of Bishop Gatimu, we raised at the church 30 million shillings in one day, six hours only. 30 minutes. So I know, I know, I, I know, I know things happen. This last month, and this is our Bible treasure, he knows, we raised for three hours. Bishop stood on the podium receiving the gift from the people and imparting them with the gift of money. Oh my goodness, we raised 30 millions. Not even a politician can raise that. Purely from members of the church. You can tap from this anointing and be a blessing to this church and even to your family. In Jesus' name. Let us rise up as we go forward. Is it, is it okay there? So bishops are going to have the There's a table and pastors at the very end of the dining. I understand that. Where is the protocol? Let me know. Uh, yeah, let me know. This is our Ibo chairman. Oh, I love him. He's our, he's our, he is our uh, uh, development chairman, and uh, he's in charge of everything. You look, you look beautiful, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bishop. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so, Kwanza um, Tukule Sawa. This door, we don't want this anybody to use this 